Rabbi Marvin Heyer, the dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, established the Museum of Tolerance here in Los Angeles. Not long from now, there will be a Museum of Tolerance in Yerushalayim. Rabbi Heyer is definitely, without a question, one of the greatest Jewish leaders, not only in America, but in the world, representing the Jewish people in front of leader after leader. And we are very proud of this man. At this time, it's our honor to have Rabbi Heyer address us. Manoma umane daber. What is there to say about our modern day Maccabees, the heroic soldiers of the IDF, who enable every Jew in the world to walk taller, who left their spouses and children and went off to battle, sacrificing their lives? for the well-being of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. My friends, the saddest thing about the war in Gaza is that it makes every Jew realize that despite the passing of thousands of years, little has changed. The names are different, but the narrative remains the same. Remember the famous story in the book of Exodus of Moses, raised as a prince by the Pharaoh's daughter. One day he goes out and he watches Egyptians tormenting Jews, personally witnessing one taskmaster terrorizing a Jew. Startled, he looks to the world for help for someone with conscience to intervene to the United Nations, to the State Department. <laughs> he looks everywhere, but in the end he discovers the truth that no one is going to fight the wars of a Jew. So he fights on alone and he pummels the taskmaster. The Torah's next three words are pregnant with meaning. Listen carefully. Ochein hadova noda hadova. The incident involving Moses, behold, it became widely known. It goes viral. Everybody in the cafes in, in Cairo are talking about it. What an outrage. A Jew has the audacity to defend himself. The incident is then covered by the BBC, CNN, and the New York Times. <laughs> Who in who instead of focusing on the story, the Pharaoh's long hatred and subjugation of the Jews, they concentrate their coverage on collateral damage caused by Moses. And they want to know how many blows he landed on the Egyptian. As a result, Moses the defender now becomes everybody's scapegoat who has to flee Egypt and fear for his life. 3,500 years later, a terrorist organization, Hamas, whose charter calls for Israel's destruction, fires hundreds of rockets into Israel's major population center. And you know what Israel does? It waits and waits. But no one acts. So Israel launches its incursion into Gaza. No sooner did the operation begin than world leaders drop everything to rush to Jerusalem with one objective in mind, to find a ceasefire, which begs the question, as my Rebbe would say in the yeshiva, for some common sense, 
Why is it only an emergency when Israel finally defends itself and responds to the terrorists? Why wasn't it an emergency for every world leader to rush to Jerusalem five years ago with the objective of preventing Hamas from having 10,000 rockets? Why no urgency on convening a UN conference for tightening the borders and closing the tunnels to prevent terrorists from attacking Israel. It was no emergency. Why no alarm bells on putting pressure on Hamas's funders, Iran and Qatar? No, my friend. The alarm bell only goes off that there's an emergency when someone yells collateral damage. Let us be clear. There must be no moral equivalency between the State of Israel and Hamas. How many countries at war with terrorists make telephone calls and distribute leaflets warning all civilians to leave. My friends, one of the most pivotal moments in history was the invasion of Normandy, and thank God for Winston Churchill. But do you know, but do you know, my friends, that between 25,000 to 38,000 mainly French civilians, men, women, and children, were killed in the first weeks of the invasion and the attempts to get to Normandy because wars are not perfect and not fought with precision. And do you also know, in all the wars that Israel has fought with Hamas lasting nine years, the total death toll of civilians up until today has been 2,200 for nine years. But the whole world is talking only about Israel's collateral damage. Of course, my friends, any innocent civilian casualty is a tragedy. But let's not distort history. Stop judging Israel by a different standard that we would judge the rest of the world. Stop making Israel the poster child for collateral damage as if you never heard of it before. This time, my friends, Israel deserves a real solution from world leaders, not a Band-Aid solution. And as for the people of Gaza, the solution for the people of Gaza is crystal clear. No more tunnels, no more rockets, and no more Hamas. Then you'll have peace. <laughs>